Hey everyone, this is Pablo from Happy Soup and Salto. And in this video, I'm going to show you the developer workflow that I describe in the Salesforce Ben article, where I explain how to do CI CD for Salesforce using GitHub Actions and the org development model. So the idea is that at the beginning of the sprint, you will have your repository with a master branch that represents your production environment. So when the sprint begins, your release manager or tech lead is going to create a development branch off of the master branch. So that's the first thing. So now we have development, which is a clone of master. Now the individual developer is going to go to their Visual Studio code. And in this case, I'm logged in to my personal sandbox. So I have my own sandbox, but I'm going to first do a git fetch so that I get the latest branches from that repository. In this case, I got the development branch that was just created. Now, the next step is to create a feature branch off of that development branch. So for that, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. And there's this create branch from. I'm going to call the branch CRM-542. And the branch that I'm going to create this from is going to be that development branch that exists in the origin. Okay, so now I'm there and so now I'm ready to make the changes. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this PR to uh, BF page instead. Let's say that's the change that I'm doing for this user story. And if it is a success, I'm going to do a system debug this worked. Now I'm going to deploy this to my personal sandbox, right? The source org is my personal sandbox. So right now we're not doing anything with GitHub or CI CD. So now that is in my sandbox, I can go to the test class and just run it to make sure that everything's still working. Okay, and it worked. Great, so now I'm ready to actually uh, push these changes to GitHub uh, and create a pull request. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the source control here of Visual Studio Code and I can say I'm gonna commit this file and the commit message is uh, I rename the variable. Then I click here to commit and then publish changes and that's going to push this branch to the remote GitHub repository. So as you can see, immediately the branch is there. So now I can do a pull request against the development branch. So here I can specify uh, what changed. Again, um, variable was renamed. I can specify the CRM, uh, sorry, the ticket number, in this case, 542. And then I have this nice trick where I allow the developer to specify which test class they want to run. They can run either all of the test classes or multiple classes uh, separating them by a comma. In this case, I'm just gonna run one class. If you want to know how this actually translates to the class being executed, uh, check out the Salesforce Ben article. Okay, so I'm gonna create a pull request. And now what will happen is in a second, you'll see that a CSD action is going to start running. And there, there we go. So now uh, if we go here to details, we can see what's going on. So essentially, this is the um, GitHub action that executes when a pull request is open against the development branch. And that file, again, is explained in the Salesforce Ben article, but just to show it here, it's uh, this one here that uh, triggers when a pull request is open against the development branch. So what this is going to do is it's going to install a few things on the virtual machine in GitHub. Then it's going to do a check only deploy to the integration sandbox, is going to scan the code for any vulnerabilities, and it's also going to run the test that I specified. So this can take around uh, two to three minutes. So I'm just gonna pause the screen for a second and I'll come back to you. Okay, so now it's doing the interesting parts. So what it's doing here is it was able to log into the integration sandbox. Now it generated a Delta package with only the metadata that has changed. So notice that I didn't have to do it. I never specified what changed. It's all done automatically. And then it did some code scanning and then it did a check only deploy. So if I go to my um, integration sandbox, I see a brand new uh, just right now deployment that succeeded and it's a check only deploy. And if I go here to view details, 
I can see that only one test class was executed, which is the one that I specified in the pull request. Great, so if I go back to the pull request, now I'm gonna play the role of a tech lead, right? So my developer created this pull request and then I'm gonna review the code so I can go here to see uh, what changed. I can also see the commits that they made. Uh, and then here I'm going to check um, that, that everything passed, which is you know the code scanning, the automated deployments. If I go here to show all checks, I see that everything passed, but there are actually two alerts on the code scanning results. So something is off with the code. So I can go here to details and see what is wrong. And it appears that there's something here about the debug statements contributing to longer CPU times. Okay, so we have a code scanning rule that doesn't like um, system debug um, statements. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell my developer, obviously myself, uh, to remove the debug statement. So let's say, this looks great. Can you please remove the debug statement? So now the developer would get this notification and I'm gonna play the role of the developer again. I'm gonna go here and say, okay, fine. I'm going to remove that debug statement. Um, I'm going to deploy this to my own sandbox. Remember, you always have to deploy it to your own sandbox. But now I'm going to commit the changes. So I go back here, uh, I'm gonna say everything and, and I'm gonna type in here, remove debug statement. I commit, then I sync the changes. And the cool thing is because this feature branch already has a pull request open, you can see that the commit immediately shows up there. And again, we're going to start executing all the actions again. We're gonna do another um, check only deploy. We're gonna check the code for any vulnerabilities and everything is going to be done automatically for you. So because you already saw this, I'm going to pause the video again and we'll come back when this is done. Okay, so it has succeeded this time. So if I go here to show all checks, as you can see, there are no new alerts or fixed alerts. So it means that we don't have any vulnerabilities or any code smells. So now I'm ready to actually uh, squash and merge this pull request. Now, what's gonna happen is that this feature branch is going to be merged into the development branch. So if I go here to the development branch, you'll see that the commit or that a commit or a change was made on the development branch. And now a new action is executing on the development branch. And this is the action that's going to take the development branch and deploy it this time for real to the integration sandbox. So at the end of the sprint, the release manager would do a pull request between the development branch and the master branch. And when the development branch is merged into master, that would finally trigger the production deployment. So that's it. Again, there are more details in the GitHub repository and the Salesforce Ben article, so please do go and check that out. And thanks for watching.